we are going to discuss about the graph of quadratic functions in different forms. First, we're going to have an unlocking of terms such as intercept, that is an act or instance of intersecting something, symmetry, the quality of being made up of exactly similar parts facing each other or around an axis, vertex, turning point of the parabola in either minimum point or maximum point. Parabola is the graph of quadratic functions. Direction of the opening, if a is greater than 0 or the value of a is positive, then the direction of the opening is upward and if a is less than 0 or if a is negative, the direction of the opening is downward. Now, we're going to graph a quadratic function in the form of y is equal to ax squared where the value of h and k here are both equal to 0 and the value of the linear term and the constant term is also 0. Now here is an example on how to complete the table of values of quadratic function given y is equal to x squared and this table. What if the value of x is negative 2? What will be the value of y? So here is the solution. You're just going to substitute this x into the function here. So we use negative 2 for our first value of x. So we have negative 2 squared, negative 2 times negative 2, we get positive 4. And after we solve for the value of y, just put it here. So the first ordered pair that we have is negative 2 comma positive 4. Now, we are going to complete the table given the functions below. We have y is equal to x squared, y is equal to 2x squared, y is equal to 3x squared using the value of x such as negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So, I will give you time to finish that. Alright, so we have these values. So, you are going to create a an ordered pair so using the value of x and y that we have in each function. So we have these ordered pairs that came from our table of values. So using GeoGebra or graphing calculator, we can form these graphs in function y is equal to x squared, y equals to x squared, and y is equal to 3x squared. Since a is greater than 0, the parabola opens upward. The axis of symmetry is in line of x which is equal to 0 or the y axis because this is the line that divides the graph into two equal parts. And the vertex is at 0, 0. Remember, vertex is the turning point of the parabola. So, from there going down and it turns up. So, the turning point is at 0, 0. So, the turning point which is 0, 0 is called minimum point. As you can see in this graph, this point 0, 0 is the lowest point of the graph or we called it minimum point. Next, the domain is the set of x. Since I gave you a variety of values of x or infinite values of x, therefore, the domain are set, set of all real numbers. While the range, look at this graph. So the value of our range covers all the value of y starting from here. So therefore, the value of y are greater than or equal to 0. All numbers greater than and equal to 0 are all the possible values of our range or y. And as you can see, the graph of y is equal to 3x squared, this red one, is narrower and closer to y-axis than the graph of y is equal to 2x squared and y is equal to x squared. 
Remember, the greater the value of A is narrower the graph and closer to y-axis. Another example, so here is the proper way of completing a table. Again, so if we have here negative 2, substitute 2, the value of x. So we have negative 3 times negative 2 square. So we have negative 2 times negative 2. That is positive 4 times 3, we get negative 12. So the first ordered pair that we have is negative 2 comma negative 12. So another, you're just going to complete this table using the process that I have teached to you a while ago. So, are you done? Therefore, we arrive to this table of value. So given this table of value, we can get these ordered pairs. Okay, then you are going to graph. Alright. It's something different from our first graph because our first graph is all parabola that opens upward while this one since a is less than zero as you can notice the values of a here are all less than zero or negative numbers the parabola opens downward then the axis of symmetry is also at the line x which is zero or the value of our h here is zero so it is found in y-axis next all of this graph has a vertex which is zero comma zero so from there going up and turn here at zero comma zero going down again so the vertex or the turning point is at 0, 0. Next, the maximum point is 0, 0. Now, we called our vertex here as maximum point because it is the highest point found in our graph. So, that's why we called it maximum point, our vertex here, which is comma 0, 0. Next, the domain, so the set of values of x that we have here are all set of real numbers. While the range or the value of y that we have in our graph, so we have y which is less than or equal to 0. Okay, it is less than or equal to 0 because all the possible value for, for y are all negative numbers starting from zero so if you're going to describe these three graphs or let's compare these three graphs the graph of y is equal to negative 3x squared is narrower and closer to the y-axis than the graph of y is equal to negative x squared and negative 2x squared it is almost the same with our first example except its direction of the opening so meaning you're just going to look at the absolute value of a here okay now the graph of y is equal to a x square as value of a or as absolute value of a increases the graph becomes narrower and closer to a axis now you're going to disregard the sign of A, which is negative. Just get it or get the absolute value of A. Furthermore, the graph of y is equal to x squared, y is equal to negative x squared, y is equal to 2x squared, and y is equal to negative 2x squared, y is equal to 3x squared, and y is equal to negative 3x squared are all reflections of each other now here is our representation to the six functions okay so disregard the sign 
and the direction of the opening is also different. It depends upon the value or the sign of A. It just matter here. The sign of A if it is opens upward or downward. But the size of the, the opening of the graph is almost the same. This one. They are almost the same. So that's it for y is equal to ax squared. Now, I will test you if you learn something from our graph given y is equal to ax squared. So based on your observation, the function y is equal to x squared, can you give the vertex? Alright, we have 0, 0. The axis of symmetry is the value of h that is 0. Since the value of a here is positive, Therefore, the direction of the opening is upward. And y-intercept is also 0, 0, because this is the only point where the graph passes through the y-axis. Another, y is equal to 3x squared. So the vertex of this is, again, 0, 0. The axis of symmetry is also 0. The direction of the opening is upward because the A here is positive and the Y-intercept is 0. Next, negative 4X square has a vertex of 0, 0. Axis of symmetry is 0. Direction of the opening is downward. Y-intercept is 0, 0. Remember, there is no sign for 0 here. It is just a typographical error. So, as you can notice, the vertex axis of symmetry, direction of the opening, and y-intercept are almost the same to the graph of y is equal to ax squared. It just matter if the value of a is positive, therefore the parabola opens upward and if the value of a here is negative, therefore, the parabola opens downward. Okay? The vertex is always 0, 0. Axis of symmetry is always 0. Or x equals 0. And y-intercept is always 0, 0. Now, can you give which of these three functions is the widest graph? Or rather, the narrower or the narrowest graph. So it is y is equal to negative 4x squared. If we're going to get the absolute value of negative 4x squared, the value of a here is positive 4. Since the value of a here is the greatest among these three, therefore, this graph is the narrowest. The narrowest among these three graphs. Now, we're going to graph another form of quadratic function which is y is equal to a times the quantity of x minus h squared. Now, we have here a value of h. Aside from a and x here, we have here h or the x value of our vertex. So, again, here is the example of completing the table of values using this function. And given this table, you're just going to substitute the value of x here, then solve. So, we have here negative 2 for our first value of x. So, we have negative 2 plus negative 2, we get negative 4. And then square, we have positive 16. And our first ordered pair is negative 2, comma 16. And you're just going to com continue solving this to get the other value of y. Now, you're going to complete this table. Remember that it is important to get the value of h and k because you're going to place that in 
the middle of our table so that our table is balanced and our graph is also balanced. So, if you're going to complete this table, we can get these. As you can notice, all of the values of y are all the same. 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. And to the second function, we get also the same. While the value of x here are different. Because the value of x here is depends to the value of h in our given. Since our h here is 0, so we put 0 to the middle of our table while the h here is positive 3 so we put positive 3 in the middle and we have here negative 3 for h so we put negative 3 in the middle and don't forget to write the number to the right side of 0 so the number to the right side of 0 is 1 and 2 to the left side of 0 is negative 1 and negative 2 Next, after you put positive 3, determine the numbers to the right side of 3. So we have 4 and 5 and so on. So to the left side, so we going back from 3 to 1. Next, negative 3. So in negative numbers, to the left side of the negative numbers, we have the greater number. But with negative sign. So to the right side, we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, and so on. Or all the numbers which are greater than negative 3. And just copy the value of x such as 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. If our value of a here is 1 or imaginary 1. So we can get these values. Next. You can use graphing calculator and JGebra to graph the following quadratic functions to graph it easily. So we can form this graph. This is the graph of y is equal to x plus 3 square y is equal to x square y is equal to x minus 3 square. The vertex is at negative 3 comma 0, 0 comma 0. 3 comma 0. Since all of the parabola or functions are all positive values of a here, therefore it opens upward. Or these three parabolas opens upward. And the value of h of these three parabolas are different. The value of h here is negative 3. Therefore the axis of symmetry of this function x plus 3 square is negative 3. Here we have 0 or h equals 0. That is the value of our h. And for our vertex here, the value of h is positive 3. Therefore, their axis of symmetry are different because they were divided by axis of saving 3 in different positions of this graph. So now let's de determine other properties of the, this, these three functions. So in x plus 3 square, x minus 3 square. So in first parabola, it opens upward. The axis of symmetry is negative 3. Don't forget to interchange the sign of positive here to negative because according to our formula in vertex form, we have x minus h. Therefore, since our based on our formula, this is minus, and if this is positive, you are going to change this into negative, the value of h here. Next, the vertex is at this point this point is negative 3 comma 0 the minimum point is negative 3 comma 0 we call this vertex as minimum point next domain set of all real num numbers as always 
and the range from here from 0 and up we have y is greater than or equal to 0. Next function. Since a is greater than 0, the parabola opens upward. Axis of symmetry is 0. Vertex is at 0, 0. And the minimum point is at 0, 0. The domain are all the values of x. Next, the range. Since the parabola opens upward, it takes all the values of y which are greater than and equal to 0. Lastly, since a is greater than 0 again, the parabola opens upward. The axis of symmetry is in line, which is x equals 3 because the graph of the function y is equal to x minus 3 squared is divided into this value of x, which is 3. Or just simply get the value of h here. Since this is negative, it became positive 3. The vertex is at 3, 0. And that is minimum point, 3, 0. The domain are set of all real numbers. And the range are all numbers of y which is greater than or equal to 0. So the y-intercept is 0, 9, or C, C, or the constant, which is 9. So, it can't be seen here because our graph is cut, cut here. So, we have here 0, 9, or constant, which is 9. And we have 0, 0, or 0. Remember, y-intercept is the point that touches the y-axis. So, I will going to show you on how to solve or how to find the y-intercept. So, if you're going to extend our graph above, so we can found this point at 0, 9, which is our y-intercept or c equals 9. What is this c which is equal to 9? That is constant value of our quadratic function. Since our function here is x plus 3 square and x minus 3 square, you're just going to rewrite this into standard, standard form by expanding x plus 3 square. So we can get x squared plus 6x plus 9. You can expand this using the FOIL method or 3 times 3 we get 9. So the value of constant here is positive 9. So next. The value of the constant here also is positive 9. So the, these two graphs intersect at the point 0, 9 or at the constant point which is positive 9. Remember, if you're, if you're not going to graph this function and you're just going to identify the y-intercept, you can transform the function into standard form then get the value of c. Our constant, we can get easily the value of our y-intercept. Now, if you're not going to transform the graph or the function into the standard form of quadratic function, you can graph. And then, you're going to look for the point that touches the y-axis. So, we have here this value. Next, how many times does the graph shifted from the origin? Now, look at the value of h here and the location of our graph. y is equal to x plus 3 square and y is equal to x minus 3 square. Now, let's describe how many times does the graph shifted from the origin and the origin is here, which is the point 0, 0. So, the graph of y is equal to x plus 3 square is shifted 1, 2, 3. 3 units to the left of the origin while the graph of y equals x minus 3 square is shifted 3 units to the right of the origin. So, from the origin 1, 2, 3 or h units 
what is the value of h here in our function? That is 3. The value of r, h here is 3. Now, can you identify the function that is being described in each sentence? So, the graph of y is equal to x squared shifted 8 units to the right of the, the origin. So, if the graph shifted to the right, therefore, it is minus. If our given is right, you are going to minus and copy the form y is equal to x minus h squared. So, we have the graph or function x here, then put outside the square and we have 8 shifted to the right. So, since this is right, we're going to use minus. Next, graph of y is equal to x squared shifted 4 units to the left. Since this is left, you are going to use addition symbol. Then, plus 4. y is equal to x plus 4 square. How about this one? We have here 4. Now, you're going to put 4 outside the closed and open parentheses. So, since it is right, you're going to use subtraction. So, we have 4. The value of a here is 4. Copy the 10. 10 units. And write means that is minus. So we have 4 times the quantity of x minus 10 square. In summary, the graph of y is equal to a times the quantity of x minus h square. The graph of y is equal to a times the quantity of x plus h square where, where a and h are positive real numbers. It is the same as the graph of y is equal to a, a x square. So it is the same with here, except that the vertex is shifted 8 units to the left of the origin. Remember, if our given here is plus, it is shifted h units. It depends on the value of h here. The number of times does the graph shifted from the origin. Next, we have here a times the quantity of x minus h squared. So, it is almost the same again with y is equal to ax squared, but it is shifted h units to the right of the origin. Since this is minus, it shifted h units. It depends to the number of h here or the value of h here, and the graph is shifted to the right of the origin. Now, let's review if you learn something to our less so given the following functions can you identify the following so without using a graph can you describe the following in this function given these functions in y is equal to x square we already discussed that a while ago so the vertex is 0 comma 0 h equals 0 direction of the opening is upward since a here is positive and y-intercept is 0, 0. How about this one? The vertex here is the value of h, comma k. Since k here is equal to 0, we only have negative 4, comma 0. We have here negative. So, you're just going to multiply negative into 4 here. So, we have negative 4, comma 0. Then, the axis of symmetry is the value of h. The value of h is negative 4. Since the value of a here is negative, therefore, the direction of the opening is downward. The y-intercept is 0, 16. So, if you're going to rewrite this into standard form of quadratic function, we can get the value of constant which is negative 16. Or you can simply multiply 4 times 4, 16 times negative. We have negative 16. So that is the y-intercept or the constant value of the quadratic function. Next, 
the vertex of x minus 9 square. So the value of h here is positive 9 and the value of k is 0. So we have 9 comma 0 or h comma k. Again, the value of h is 9 and k is 0. Then the axis of symmetry is the value of h or the x value of our vertex. That is positive 9, the x value here. And the direction of the opening, since the value of A here is positive number, therefore the graph opens upward and the y-intercept, we write this into standard form of quadratic function to get the y-intercept. Or you can simply multiply 9 times 9, we get positive A to 1. So here is y-intercept. Alright, so the graph of y is equal to negative x plus 4 square is the same as the graph of y is equal to negative x square but it is shifted 4 units to the left of the origin. While this one is the same as the graph of y is equal to x squared but it is shifted 9 units to the right of the origin. So, I have here another graph. What have we noticed to this graph? So, the, gra the three graphs here shifted from the origin. It's not from the left or right direction. So, it shifted above and below the origin. So, this one is the graph of y is equal to x squared plus 2. This one is the graph of y is equal to x squared. And the other one is the graph of y is equal to x squared minus 2. As you can notice, this function shows y is equal to x squared plus k. We don't have here a value of h. Instead, we have here k. Or the y value in our vertex. So, if our given is plus 2, therefore the graph is shifted 2 units above, plus, above, and then k is 2. Therefore, k units above the origin, while, while y is equal to x squared, it doesn't shifted from the origin because it doesn't have a value of h nor the value of k, while in y is equal to x squared, minus 2, we have negative 2, meaning below, 2 units below the origin. So they are different, or they have different vertex. So the vertex of y is equal to x squared plus 2, we have 0, comma 2. Vertex of x squared is 0, comma 0, or at the origin, while in x squared minus 2, we have 0, comma, negative 2. So the y-intercept is also its vertex. Remember, in the graph of y is equal to x squared plus k, the vertex and the y-intercept is the same because their vertex lies on the y-axis and also y-axis or, or the points in y-axis are the, uh, the y-intercept of the graph. That's why the vertex and y-intercept in this function is the same or equal. So this is their axis of symmetry. These three graphs has also the same axis of symmetry, which is h equals 0 or the y-axis. Since... The values of A here are all positive, therefore the parabola opens upward. Now, we're going to graph a quadratic function in the form of y is equal to ax squared plus k. So here is the example on how to complete the table. Just get the first value of x, then substitute. After you substitute, Multiply by itself, then add. 
we get 7. So the first ordered pair here is negative 2, comma 7. So here is the table that you're going to complete. As you can notice, the value of h are all 0. That's why I put 0 in the middle of the table because we don't have any value for h except 0. So here are the values if you're going to solve one by one. It takes time, that's why i just going to put it here. So here is our table for this function. Now given this table, we can form an ordered pair that you're going to graph using graphing calculator or JGebra. Remember, I created a separate presentation for the proper use or on how to use a JGebra or graphing calculator. So we can easily graph these functions. By entering this function, JGebra, we can show this graph. So here is the graph. X squared plus 3. x squared and x squared minus 3. The vertex of this function is at 0, 3. This one is at 0, 0. And the other one is at 0, negative 3. Since we don't have value of h here and we just only have value of k, so we write 0 in h. And in K, just take these values. Since all of this parabola has a positive value of A, the parabola opens upward. And the axis of symmetry or the line that divides these three graphs into two equal parts is in the line of the y-axis or H equals 0. And here are some properties of these three graphs. Okay, this first graph opens upward. Axis of symmetry is the value of H, that is 0. Vertex is at 0, 3 because it turns here. And here is minimum point, 0, 3. The y-intercept is also the vertex because the vertex also touches the y-axis. Therefore, the vertex is also the y-intercept. And the domain, we have here set of all real numbers as always. And the range starting from here 3 and greater than, greater than or equal to positive 3, it is the set of our, of our range. Next, y is equal to x squared. Here are some properties which is the same with our first example. And last one, x squared minus 3. Since a is greater than 0, the parabola opens upward. The axis of symmetry is the same with the other two graphs, which is 0. The vertex is at 0, negative 3 based on our given negative 3 here. And the minimum point, at 0, negative 3. The y-intercept is 0, negative 3 or 0 or c equals negative 3. And the domain are all set of real numbers. And the y is starting from negative 3 and above or greater than or equal to negative 3. Here is the representation. Okay, so now let's describe how does the graph shifted from the origin. Okay, since this is plus 3, x squared plus 3, or in this is the function in the form of x squared plus k, where h is equal to 0, but we have here a value of k. Therefore, the graph is shifted 3 units above the origin while the other one, if our given is minus, the graph is shifted 3 units below the origin. 
Now, given this uh, behavior of the graph, can you identify the function that is being described in each sen sentence? First, the graph of y is equal to x squared shifted 8 units below the origin. Just write x squared here, and then below, minus, and then 8. 8 units. That's it. Another. The graph of y is equal to 2x squared. Just write 2x squared. After you write 2x squared, since there is the clue word here is above, you're going to use plus and then 4. Next, copy negative 5x squared and it is below. Therefore, you're going to use minus and then the number of units which is 6 minus 6. So, this is how you're going to write a quadratic function using this um, description. So, in summary, the graph of y is equal to ax squared plus k, where a and k are positive real numbers, is the same as the graph of y is equal to ax squared except that the vertex is shifted k units above the origin, while the graph of y is equal to ax squared minus k, it is below the origin. Again, if the given is plus, it is above the the origin. Okay, now let's try if you learn something in our discussion. Again, the vertex of this function is 0, 0, axis of symmetry is 0, upward, and 0, 0. This one, can you determine the vertex? The vertex here without graphing this function we can easily identify by writing 0 as the value of h and k as 5, or that is 0, 5. And the axis of symmetry is the h, h equals 0. Since a is negative here, therefore the parabola opens downward. And the y-intercept is also the vertex, or the value of c, that is 5. Next, the vertex here is 0, comma, negative 7. The axis of symmetry is 0. The direction of the opening is upward because the value of A is positive. Then the y-intercept is the constant number which is 7 or 0, comma, negative 7. And this function is shifted 5 units above the origin. And this other function is shifted 7 units above the origin. Since this is, uh, sorry, this is below the origin because this is minus, typographical error. This is below the origin. Now let's review the graph of y is equal to ax squared. The graph of y is equal to ax squared, the comparison of this graph is either wider or narrower. So remember, the lesser the value of a is wider the graph. The greater the value of a is narrower the graph. Just get the absolute value of a. Next. So the behavior of our graph, if our function is given in y is equal to a times the quantity of x minus h where it is shifted, it's either right or left. If our given is in minus, therefore it shifted to the right of the origin. If our given is in plus h, it shifted to the left of the origin. If our given now is in the form of ax squared plus k or ax squared plus the constant here or the value of k, we have if plus k, the graph is shifted above. If we have minus k, the graph is shifted below the origin. So, which of these three graphs is narrower? Which graph is wider? So, the graph of y is equal to x squared is wider than these two graphs. And the graph of y is equal to 2x, 3x squared 
it's narrower as you can notice narrower than these two functions next how many times does the graph shifted from the origin so this graph shifted three units above the origin and the other one shifted three units below the origin another how many times does the graph shifted from the origin since this is in the form of y is equal to x minus h squared so it shifted three units to the left and three units this one is three units to the right of the origin another what if we have here a complete value for h and k so i have here a table which are going to complete using these values so remember in creating a table of values you are going to consider the value of each of our quadratic function the value of h here is zero because we don't have any value or number for h here next the value of h here is negative three next the value of h here is positive seven okay so after you determine the value of h and put it in the middle of the table write down all numbers to the right of this number and all numbers to the left of this number so here are the numbers that's how you're going to assign a value for x next just substitute then we can get these values okay so remember if you're going to complete a table since you get this zero from one of our value or from one or the x value of our vertex our vertex is here zero comma zero next our vertex is negative three comma two that is negative three comma two and the other one is seven comma negative three here it is seven comma negative three okay so we need to put all vertex in the middle of our table so that our graph is stable uh, is balanced and also our table is also balanced now using graphing calculator or jgebra let's graph these functions so the graph of our function y is equal to x plus 3 square plus 2 so take note of this plus 3 and since here is our origin so it shifted 3 units 1 2 3 to the left because this is plus remember to interchange this if this is plus therefore it is going to the left of the origin next after going to the left of the origin, how many times does the graph shifted above? That is the value of k, which is 2. From here, count 2. 1, 2. So we have here this point. So this is our graph and turn here at negative 3, comma, positive 2, then goes up. So here is the graph of x minus 3 squared x or x plus 3 squared plus 2 so the graph here is shifted 3 units to the left of the origin and 2 units above the origin so we have here 2 2 directions left and above this is left and above next so here is our y-intercept, 0, 11. How are you going to find the y-intercept? So we just transform our function into standard form and get the value of c that is 11. Next, second function, the parabola opens downward because the value of a here is negative. Next, since this is minus 7, Therefore, the graph shifted 7 units to the right of the origin. So, here is 7. Next, since this is minus 3, therefore, it shifted 3 units from here 
count one, two, three. It shifted three units below the origin. Therefore, here can be found the vertex of this quadratic function. So, the graph is shifted seven units, seven units to the right, and three units below the origin. And here is our y-intercept. Just get the value of the constant term and we can see here the graph of these two functions. Again, this is the graph of y is equal to x plus 3 square plus 2. And the other one here, since it is opens downward, y is equal to negative times the quantity of x minus 7 square, then minus 3. That's it. Now, given this function, can you identify the following? Of course, in x square, we have these values. Okay? Now, the vertex here is negative 3. Just don't forget to change the sign of this uh, number in h. So, it is plus, therefore, that is negative 3. Just remain the sign of k, that is positive 2. Axis of symmetry is h, negative 3. It opens upward. And we have here y-intercept, which is 11. Or you can find the y-intercept. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 2, we get 11. That's it. Next. For the vertex of this function, we have positive 7 comma negative 3. Change the sign, 7, then copy, negative 3. And axis of symmetry is the h. h is 7. Then, it is negative, it opens downward. And the y-intercept is 7 times 7, that is 49 plus 3, that is negative 52. Can you identify the function that is being described in each sentence? First, the graph of y is equal to x squared shifted 8 units to the right of the origin. That is y equals x squared or y is equal to x shifted right. So this is minus 8 and 5 above, that is plus 5 here. Next, copy 2 as a value of a, just write below the, uh, or before the open parenthesis. 4 units to the left, that is plus, and then 3 below, that is minus 3. Next, copy negative 5 as the value of a. Next, 6. And then right, therefore it is minus, and then 6, then below. Since this is below, that is minus. So that's how we're going to rewrite the following characteristic into quadratic function. Now, can you graph y is equal to 8 times the quantity of x minus 8 minus h squared plus k? I know that you already know how to graph this function and this is how you're going to describe the function. So the graph of y is equal to a times the quantity of x minus h squared plus k where a, h, and k are positive real numbers is the same as the graph of y is equal to ax squared except that the vertex is shifted k units above or below the origin and h units to the right or left of the origin. So example, y is equal to negative 2 times the quantity of x minus 9 squared plus 10. So the graph is shifted, or the graph is the same with the graph of negative 2 x squared, except that the vertex is shifted 9 units here, 9 units to the right, and 10 units above the origin. That's it. Now, can you identify the function that is being described in each sentence? So, number 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Can you write down your answer?
Okay, number 1, we have x minus 10 square minus 7 x minus 4 square minus 2 2 times the quantity of x plus 4 square minus 3 negative 5 times the quantity of x minus 6 square minus 6 and x minus 8 square plus 5 okay now let's review for another lesson let's review this what are the methods of finding quadratic function so we have different methods such as factoring method, completing the square, and quadratic formula. And we have the other one which is extracting the square for special cases. So we're going to use these three methods in finding the zeros of quadratic function. Remember, when we say zero, these are the solutions of quadratic function. Now, who am I? So, based on this um, expression, can you guess the topic for this time? So, we have zeros of quadratic function. So, in zeros of quadratic function, okay, we, we can solve our answer using these methods. So, we have factoring method, quadratic formula, completing the square method, and by x-intercepts. Remember that zeros of quadratic function are also the x-intercepts. When we say x-intercepts, these are the value of x that touches the graph. Now, can you find the zero of y is equal to x squared minus 2, x minus 3? So, I try to use factoring method. So, let's factor 3. First, let's set y equal 0. So we have x squared minus 2, x minus 3. So factor, so we have x minus 3 times the quantity of x plus 1. So 3 times 1, that is 3. Negative 3 plus 1, that is negative 2. Next, use the zero factor property. And we get x which is positive 3 and negative 1. So here are the zeros of our quadratic function which is 3 and negative 1. Now, let's create a table for y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. Let's use the same given. So, let's put the positive 1 here. Uh, remember, don't forget to find the vertex of this quadratic function. So, the value of x Vary so that our table or graph is balanced. So the vertex form is negative 1 or positive 1 comma negative 4. That's why you're going to put the value of h in the middle of the table of values in x. Then write down the number to the right side of 1 that is 2 and 3. So the number to the left side of 1 is 0 and negative 1. After you write down the values of x here, now solve for y. Just substitute the values of x here one by one to solve for y. So we use negative 1, we get 0. So we have negative 3, negative 4, which is the value of our k here, negative 4, negative 3, and 0. As you can notice in our table, there are the values of x which y became 0. So what are the values of x which y became 0? So these are negative 1 and positive 3. Therefore, if you're going to graph this table, we are going to arrive to this graph. This is negative 1, comma 0 and 3, comma 0. Therefore, if our given is table, look for the value of y where x or the value of x where y became 0. Or if you're going to graph, look for the point that touches the y-axis. That is called the x-intercept. X-intercept is also called the zero of quadratic function. Therefore, our answer is negative 1 and 3. Okay, in our table, we have negative 1 and positive 3. 
this is the easiest way to identify the zero of quadratic function. Now, let's define the zeros of quadratic function is the value of x when y becomes zero. And it is also the x-intercept of the function's graph. That is the zeros of quadratic function. So now, can you identify the zeros given the graph? Please take note of the answer. So as you can see, the zero here is negative 2, comma, or negative 2 and positive 3. Next, do we have zero in this given? Does the graph touches the x-axis? No. Therefore, it doesn't have zero. There is no zero in this graph. Now, given this table, can you identify the zero? The zero here is 6 and 10. Next, using the factoring method or any method you're prepared to use, can you determine the zero of this function? Now, let's try to find out the answer. So, here are the answer. So, we have, for our last given, we have negative 1 and positive 4. That's it. Okay, for our last topic for today, we have the problem solving involving quadratic function. I have here an example. Now, if the perimeter of rectangle is 100 meter, find its dimension if its area is a maximum. For example, perimeter is equal to 100 meters. Now, we're going to find all the dimensions that will arrive to 100 meter. So, given the perimeter which is 100, and given the, the formula for perimeter which is 2 length plus 2 width, okay, given this width which is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, okay, so what are the possible length to form a perimeter which is 100. Okay? So, next to 45 is 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, and 5. If you're going to check if you can get the perimeter which is 100, just substitute this value of width and the length to this formula and we can get the perimeter which is 100. For example, 20 and 30. So, 2 times 30 we have 60. And then 2 times 20, we have 40. 60 plus 40, that is 100. And all of these, if you're going to solve this as perimeter, we can get 100. Now, to get the area, can we arrive at the same area using these dimensions? To get the area, multiply the width and the length. So, we have here 5 and 45. 5 times 45, we get 225. 10 times 40, the answer is 400. 525, 600, 625, 600, 525, 400, and 225. So, this is our given table to solve the other questions followed by our given. So, I put the table here. Another question. What is the largest area that we obtain? So we have these dimensions. Now, can you guess the largest area? Here are the, the area. Alright. The largest area is 625 meter square or square meter. So using this largest area, what are the dimensions of rectangle with the largest area? When we say dimensions, the value of length and the width. So that is 25 for the length and width is 25. Alright, as you can notice, the largest area can be obtained using the perimeter which is 100. 
we can form a square because we have the same value for the width and the length. 25 by 25. Therefore, can you imagine the figure that we can form that is a square? Now, that is the largest uh, area or the largest area that we can obtain. Now, the perimeter or P of the given rectangle is 100. Make a mathematical statement for the perimeter. So, since our given for perimeter is 100 and the formula for perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width, substitute the value which is 100, then copy the formula for perimeter or interchange the their position. Next, simplify the obtained equation and solve for the length of the rectangle in terms of width. Okay, so we are going to simplify this because all of these are all divisible by 2. For an even number, we can divide this by 2. We get length plus width equals 50. Or it says that we are going to solve in terms of width. So we are going to write the width here. Therefore, the length, solve for the length. Now, we are looking for the length and then we're going to solve for the length in terms of width. Or you're just going to apply the addition property of equality. From plus W, it became minus W here. So, here are the steps. Next, number 5. Express the area of a rectangle as a function of its width. Therefore, we can represent that as a of W, then the formula for area, that is length times width, meaning we are going to replace the W here with our value of our length. A while ago in our first example, length is equivalent to 50 minus W times the width, then multiply. Next, so we arrive W times 50 is 50 W. W times W is W square. Next, what kind of equation is the result? We form quadratic function. Next, express the function in vertex form. In this method, I used a process by completing the square. And here are the steps. So the vertex form that we form is negative times the quantity of W minus 25 squared plus 625. Or you can use the formula for H and K. All you have to do is to rewrite the function into standard form, then get the value of A, B, and C. A is negative 1, B is positive 50, and C is 0 because we don't have constant here. After that, substitute the value of B and A here to find the value of H for our vertex and K. Substitute the value of A, C, B, and A. So we get 625. So the vertex form is the value up here, right here, negative 1. Next, the value of H is 25 then copy your minus from here from this formula that is minus then 25 is the value of h and k that is 625 therefore this is our vertex form next given this vertex form can you determine the vertex so the vertex is Positive 25, 625. So, the value of H is 25 and K is 625. So, that's it. Thank you for listening. I hope that you learned something from my discussion. Thank you and goodbye.